Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode. My name is Sam Sobey, and today I'm just kind of investigating a couple creeks that I found. Uh, this little creek behind me, whether it looks fast or not, uh, it's ripping pretty good. Uh, there's some waterfalls, there's some rapids, but uh, I found a couple pieces of this creek that are like, um, I guess, fairly slack water. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toss a little swim bait around, investigate it. I don't know what's in here. It could be catfish, bass, walleyes. I'm not totally sure. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of rip around, check this creek out, and um, yeah, throw a little swim bait. So, let's get fishing. Alrighty guys, first off, I'd like to apologize. It's probably pretty loud here. These rapids are ripping. There's a highway right there. So, if you're having trouble hearing me or trouble hearing what's going on, I apologize. Either way, this is a beautiful little creek. It's pretty small. I can cast all the way across it. And every time I come to a new shallow little creek that's ripping, I usually like to start off with a little swim bait. Something nice and bright. They can see it, they can pick it up quick. And just about everything in a creek system will eat a small little swim bait, whether that be a bass, largemouth, smallmouth, a walleye, catfish, doesn't really matter. I love starting out with just a small little swim bait. So I'm gonna cast this around, probably hop up and down the bank here, and uh, yeah, just see what's going on. No doubt this is freaking, this is ripping here. This is ripping really fast. So far, no action, just a lot of snags and leaves. This is ripping pretty good, but it's definitely not like too fast to fish. I can, I can still fish this for sure. All right, I just cast this little bit, no luck. I can look up ahead here and see that the main river channel kind of comes out and hits that riprap wall. But it looks like to the right, there's a giant eddy. And eddy's just a slack water place in the river. And it looks like a bunch of fish or bait could get pushed back and just be chilling right in there because they're out of the current. So I'm gonna grab my rod, grab my camera, and walk up that way and probably hit that eddy a little bit. That looks, that looks really good. Yeah, this looks super good. All right. Oh yeah, I can get a good casting angle from right here. This is good. This is a giant eddy right here. There's gonna be some fish in here. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Flip right here. Oh, it's a walleye. It's a walleye. It's a walleye. Oh, that's so sick. Oh, that's so sick. Oh, that's so sick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I guess there's walleye in here. Oh, that's so sick. That's a beautiful little walleye. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm actually, actually a little hungry and I haven't had walleye in a little bit, so I think I might throw him on the stringer and keep him. That's a freaking gorgeous little walleye on the swim bait. <laughs> I just moved up the, up here a little bit in this first little eddy I found. And a beautiful freaking walleye. All right, I'm gonna keep him. All right, I'm out here standing on just this tiny little, I don't know, old bridge piling. That was sick. That was like third cast in the eddy. Just a tiny little Kitek swimmer on an all-terrain tackle swim bait head. Huh, right there, right there. That was sick. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'm switching up my approach again. I just fan cast it around with this tiny little grub and I had no action. Not that they don't like it, it's just I like to cycle through baits and just see if something tickles their fancy a little bit better than others. I like that weight and I like this swim bait head. I'm just gonna kind of keep cycling plastics. This is a tiny little Arsenal Tactical Minnow. I actually love this little bait. It's a small little profile, pretty erratic tail on the back. Nice bright white. They should be able to see this in the river. And I like that it's a little smaller. So whether there's smaller walleyes out there or even like some panfish or tiny little river bass, they might be more prone to eat this than a little bit bigger profile from that twisty tail. God, it just sticks out in the water. This, this is gonna work. This is gonna catch them. Alrighty. Let's grab a few more GoPro batteries and uh, let's get down there. Pretty cool. I actually just saw a local dude and talked to him for a little bit. 
and uh, asked him if he had any luck and he showed me his bucket and he had like a 24 inch walleye in there a two foot long walleye and i was like holy smokes dude he's like yup i'm pretty pumped and i was like i'd be too i got a little one and i'm excited so they're down here they're eating all that's left is to just connect connect with one hunger one right in front of their face okay okay this is a bit treacherous and flip-flops but we're going for it oh boy <laughs> okay so it's ripping pretty good right down here just from the looks of it but there is some slack water so if there's some fish down here at all they've got to be right here this looks pretty good whoa oh gosh all right we made it Fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Feels pretty good. Oh, stay on, stay on, he's in the rapids. Fish on, what do we got? Oh, it's another nice little walleye. Sweet, oh, sweet. All right, I just moved sections of the river <laughs> and poked another nice little leader. I'm gonna keep him. Now we got two walleyes. <laughs> that is so sick. I changed up my approach a little bit. I'm just throwing a little mighty head jig. And on the back of that, I'm throwing just a small arsenal tactical minnow. And it's a perfect deadly little, little creek walleye approach. I'm just tossing out there and reeling it in. I'm not really letting it touch the bottom or anything. I'm just really slowly trying to get it down to the bottom and tick it right on the, oh, oh, I just got hit again. I just, oh, I just got hit again. I don't know if I'm getting snagged or hit again. Fish on, another one, another one. Feels like a walleye again. Another one, another one. This is sick. Oh, it's another walleye. It's another good walleye. Oh, oh my gosh. Another sick walleye. Another good eater. Oh my gosh, I am eating good today. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, they are here right now. Fish on, fish on. Good fish, good fish. Another good fish. Get up your sucker, good fish. Good fish. Another good walleye. Another good eater walleye. <laughs> I found the freaking mother load. I found the freaking mother load right here. They're all perfect little eaters. Oh my gosh. This is sick. I can't believe how many walleyes are right here. This is so sick. Alrighty, I haven't been here long, but that was just absolutely incredible. <laughs> also, I'll, I'll tell you really quick, if you guys want to know just like my go-to creek hopping rod, uh, it's just a Dobbin spinning rod, uh, Sierra Series 704. It's a perfect little seven foot action rod. I can throw little jig heads on it. I can throw little swim baits. I can throw Senkos. I can throw tubes. I can throw just about anything on this rod. I put 10 pound Power Pro on here, and uh, that's just like my all around go-to pond hopping, creek hopping, spinning rod reel setup. And uh, I absolutely love it. So I caught plenty of walleyes for myself to eat. I think I'm gonna head back to my house now and I'm gonna cook them up. I'm gonna cook them a pretty different way than you guys have probably ever seen. So definitely stick around for that. And um, yeah, this is this is crazy. From, from going from just creek hopping this morning to banging a bunch of walleyes, this is, <laughs> I found a new creek and it's loaded with walleyes. I'm, I'm speechless, I don't know what to say. I'm super pumped. The walleye fishing in the southern metro where I live is, is not that great. So to find a creek that's loaded with walleyes like this, that's, uh, that's pretty unique. So let's go home, cut these babies up, and uh, let's get eaten. Alrighty, 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 I'm back in my house. Um, I ended up leaving the creek because I caught four walleyes, and to be honest, that's plenty of flays, plenty of meat for me. I went out today with the intentions of just kind of checking out some new waters, scouting out some creeks and rivers, and I didn't expect really to catch anything at all. And to catch four walleyes just on this first little creek I checked, um, that's pretty cool. So I'm back in my house, I'm getting pretty hungry, I'm gonna cut these suckers up, and uh, I'm gonna make these, make these walleyes in a way that I've never really tried before. I learned this recipe from my good buddy, Corey Studer, and I get questions all the time, what's a unique way to make fish that's inexpensive, fast, not a lot of cleanup, and uh, today's recipe will kind of have all three of those in mind. So it's gonna be really cool. Stick around, stay tuned. Let's cut these bad boys up. 
Alrighty, alrighty. The walleyes have been cleaned up. They've been flayed. Uh, I brought them inside, rinsed them down. There's no more bloods, guts, scales on them. I have just beautiful walleye flays now. Uh, I think I'm gonna put three away for tonight, have those as Stephanie, but two right now I'm gonna eat. There's nothing better than fresh walleyes. So I've got a pretty cool recipe, pretty cool way to cook these fish. But first and foremost, I need to give the shout out to whose recipe this really is. It's my good buddy, Corey Studer's recipe. Uh, he works at the amazing company, Vexlar. I think a couple months ago, I was in there hanging out with him and he gave me some fish and I tried it. I was like, oh man, that's super good. Did you, did you boar, broil it? Did you bake it? Like, how'd you make it? He's like, oh, you've, you've never had poor man's fish fry? I'm like, poor man's what? He's like, poor man's fish fry. So he proceeded to tell me the recipe, tell me the process, and um, I've kind of fallen in love with it ever since. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. Also, another reason I'm making this video is I got some messages, I think a few weeks back from some college fishermen, and they're like, hey man, we live in the dorms, we love to fish all the time. Do you know any simple ways we can cook fish in our dorms? Because we like to catch fish and we'd love to have it, but um, we really don't have much kitchen access and we don't have much stuff with us because obviously we're just at college living in the dorms. So I'm like, oh, this is perfect right here. This idea is perfect. So poor man fish fry coming at you in three, two, one. Alrighty, step number one to poor man's fish fry. Uh, you need a glass bowl, a glass dish, uh, something that you can microwave or cook in Either way, you just need a small glass dish. Second thing you need is you need a stick of butter. From there, uh, the seasonings of your choice. I like Lowry's, Old Bay. Uh, a lot of people use lemon pepper. Uh, basically use whatever you like, just whatever your taste buds are feeling that day. Slap some of this on there, should be good to go. Next, you need some plastic wrap. Just generic plastic wrap you buy at the grocery store and you'll see what we do with that later. From there, obviously you need your fish. I have my fresh walleye flays right here. Delicious. I don't really care. If you live in Beverly Hills or if you're a college student living in the dorms, you for sure have access to a microwave somewhere. So that's why poor man fish fry is super cool. You don't need much. You just need fresh fish, basically a glass dish and a microwave, and you're gonna have some delicious fresh fish. So let's get after it. And last but not least, you might have guessed it, is uh, you're gonna need a microwave. Thanks again, mom. Thanks for letting me borrow the microwave. Step number one, you're gonna take your stick of butter and your glass dish. It's better if your butter's um, not exactly frozen or super cold in the refrigerator. Uh, I like to heat it up a little bit, whether you put it in the microwave for just like five or 10 seconds. It makes it, uh, I guess, semi-workable. I take the butter and I rub it on the bottom of the glass dish, just like that. It doesn't need to be a lot, just a thin coat. Just rub your butter all around down in there. I like to mix a little bit of Lowry's with my Old Bay. This isn't actually Lowry's, this is Lowry's pepper. And for some reason I just like it better. So I mix that together a little bit and then I sprinkle that down. Sprinkle that down right on the bottom. And you don't need too much, you know what I mean? Walleye and fish in general have a really nice taste. So you don't need too much overbearing seasoning. From there, I take my delicious walleye flays. I dry those bad boys off and then I take that same stick of butter and I just lather the outsides of these walleye flays. The inside, the outside, I like to get a good amount on the flays. Doesn't need to be too much, but just, just semi-coat them. From there, I'll take that same seasoning and I'll just lightly season the whole flay. Once I've seasoned one side, I put that facing down in my little glass dish. Season the other side of it. Just like so. I put a little bit of butter on top of it now. Not too much, not too much. You don't need to go overboard. You're not, you're not completely coating it. I just put a little bit more butter up on top and that's all just gonna kinda soak around the flay when it's melted in there. There you go, voila. 
And I know what you're thinking, butter's not extremely healthy, and I know that, but um, at least this doesn't have breading, so if you're gluten-free or if you're just trying to get away from bread, uh, this, is a, this is an option to make your walleye. And you don't need to put too much butter on. I probably have a little bit too much on here, but uh, that's okay, it's, it's good. Makes it taste real good. So from here, that's where the plastic wrap comes in. You're gonna take your plastic wrap and just put it right over top. And make sure it's nice and tight. All right, once you got it over there pretty tight, there's really no air on the outsides. This is an extremely important part here. You take your fork and you poke holes all around the top just to give it some breathing room. This is gonna help it breathe when it's in the microwave. Alrighty, once you poke some holes in it, you should be good to go. And that's basically it. You have your glass dish, you have butter, you have seasoning, you have your fresh flays, some plastic wrap, and a microwave. That's literally it. This is the easiest, um, most efficient way, easiest cleanup, and cheapest way to make fish, in my opinion. So, now you just throw it in the old microwave. And depending on like how powerful your microwave is, uh, I like to do it from two to three minutes. So, this microwave is semi-powerful. This dish isn't that big. I'm gonna put it in there for like two and a half minutes. Now we wait. Ah, poor man's fish fry. Obviously be extremely careful taking this out of the microwave. Ah, uh, the glass dish sometimes gets hot. Ooh, I need an oven mitt. Oh, there it is. Oh. oh. From here, you just peel off your plastic wrap. It's also fine if you want to let it sit for a minute or two. Look at that. The walleye sometimes starts to curl a little bit, and that's when you know it's really, really cooked. Oh. Poor man's fish fry. Here, I'll hold it up. The glass pan is hot, but take a look at that. Take a look at that. That is delicious. It's gonna be hot. Obviously you wanna let it cool, but I'm pretty hungry. That is freaking delicious. That is freaking delicious. It's good every time. There's an, I've tried a bunch of different seasonings, bunch of different ways to do this. There's not one time I've had this where I've been like, ugh, ugh I don't like that. I love fish, if you guys like fish, this is a pretty simple, easy process. Um, I had a blast today, going down, finding new creeks, searching waters. Um, I stumbled across a couple little eddies and they just happened to hold walleye. I don't know if they're gonna continue to hold walleye, I'll definitely be back down there to investigate. But um, finding little creeks and finding slack water, just investigating, checking it out, you never know what's gonna happen, you know what I mean? You could stumble across a couple walleyes and then next thing you know, you get a poor man's fish fry. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making this. Um, if you have fresh fish at home, I definitely, I definitely recommend this recipe. And once again, huge shout out to my buddy Corey Studer for sharing this recipe with me. So I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit, enjoy my fish, and um, I might head back out to the creek. So thank you so much again for watching the video all the way to the end. I truly, truly appreciate it. I guess there's nothing left to be said than stay tuned. And as always, let the adventure begin. See ya.